am answering one of your art questions about colored pencil. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. Today's question actually comes from one of the art groups over on Facebook, a beginner colored pencil group. I will put a link to that below in the video description if you want to check that out. But it was such a great question that I thought it'd be easier to answer it here and make a video out of it. Don't worry, I got permission from the person who asked the question. Linda Livingston writes, I am new to colored pencil. My first love has always been graphite, so adding color is a challenge for me. I need some help. I've been reading some books, watching YouTube videos, downloading tutorials, craftsy classes, etc. But some of that depends on who you watch and what materials they're using. So I could use some advice. I have a good understanding of color and color theory. What I need is practical application help. Are polychromos and prismacolor laid down differently? I know that polys are oil and prismas are wax, and I've read that it's best to use the polys first and finish with the prismas. Is this true? Do any of you mix them? What about working dark to light versus light to dark? I've read about using grays, browns, and complementary colors for shadowed areas versus using some darker shade of the color and gradually building it up to shadows that way. It seems to me when I use a lighter color of the polys first, they act as a resist to the darker color. For example, yellow and the green. I don't notice this as much with the prismas, but it does the same thing. I want to start off by saying all of the classes and tutorials and videos, these are great. They are so helpful. But I recommend for artists who are starting out, pick one lesson. One artist, kind of focus on what they're teaching for a few projects, do things their way, and then try the next artist, the next tutorial, the next set of materials that they're using, and just focus on that a little bit for a few pieces until you move on to the next. It's great to try several different ways and several different artists. You're going to end up incorporating all of the things that they're teaching into your own unique style and your own way of working. But when you start off trying to throw everybody's methods, everybody's advice, all at yourself at once is going to overwhelm you and you're going to feel like you're sinking. Like there's just too much information, too many different ways of doing things. And the way I do things, my technique may not work with another person's technique and supplies. Everybody's going to have different ways. It's not that one's right or one's wrong. Just don't overwhelm yourself with too much all at once. Learn what you can from each individual teacher that you're going to, each individual class or video before you try somebody else's way of doing things. Now polychromos mixed with Prismacolor. Everyone knows I don't really use Prismacolor anymore, but I do use Luminance, which is similar in that they are both wax-based. But even when I did mix the Polychromos and the Prismacolor together, I don't generally worry about Polychromos has to go first and then Prismacolor. That's usually not what my thought process is. There are three main reasons, and even now with the Polychromos and the Luminance together, there are three main factors that I use to determine what which I'm going to use in which order. First, that decision is often made on color. Sometimes the color I want is just in the luminance and not in the polychromos, and it's as simple as that. The second reason, which is a little bit more in depth, would be the opacity. Polychromos are fairly translucent, whereas the wax-based pencils, Prismacolor and Polychromos, they are going to be your more opaque colors. And one of the reasons that I think a lot of people will put the polychromos down, it's not that polychromos can't go on top of luminance, not at all, as long as you're not burnishing. That's a whole other thing. If you are burnishing you any of the, the colors, especially the wax-based, because they will build up that wax Prismacolor more so than any other brand, it will make it hard to add additional layers no matter which pencil you're using on top. So just remember to work on a light hand and you can layer the polychromos on top of Prisma no problem. But the reason that a lot of us are putting the polychromos down first is that they are more translucent. We want our more opaque colors last, the whites, the creams, those we usually will want to go in on top of the translucent colors because that's when we want a bit more coverage. But the polychromos putting down first, being that they are so translucent and you can layer and layer, you get so much depth that way versus using just op the opaque colors to begin with. So that's where a lot of that is coming into play for me, which I choose is how opaque I need that color to be. Do I need heavier coverage? Do I need lighter coverage and finer detail? Which brings me on to my third reason, detail. My polychromos are going to get so much more detail than most other brands that I've used because they sharpen to a much, much finer point. Even with the Lyra Rembrandt, those are oil-based and those do not get the detail even close to what the polychromos can be. So that's where I'm going to reach for my polychromos. Again, I want the detail. If I don't need as much detail, but I want the opacity, then I'm back to my wax-based pencils. I also find that the wax-based pencils, if I'm doing skin, or something that I need really smooth blending, I'm going to get that better with my more opaque wax-based pencils. But all of these, it comes down to the technique and the way that I'm working. Another artist may work in a totally different way and their reasons and their answer about this isn't wrong, it's just 
just different than how I work. So going back to choose one that you're focusing on one artist's lessons first get what you can from that and then try another artist but don't try them all at once because there's too many conflicting things for dark to light or light to dark this is definitely situational for me more often than not i'm going light to dark but i'm not going to put white if i don't need something to be white if i put white down you're right it does make it hard to get color on top or some of the other colors i've had that with my lighter light flesh i believe will make it hard to get other colors on top of that with the polychromos some colors do tend to just kind of protect the paper from other color going on top of that. You're going to figure out which ones do that just by experience. And you can test it. I always have a scratch piece of paper next to me that I can do these testings on first to find that out before I hit my actual project and think, crap, how do I fix this now? And there are times I've done birds where it made more sense to get my darker grays down first and then come on top with my highlights with white, which made it a lighter gray because you're not going to go back to totally white, putting light colors on top of dark here. But I was able to get my highlights better by going dark to light. When I did the fur on Jon Snow, he's wearing black fur. I did my dark first and then built up to my light because it made more sense. When I did my little test sample, I liked the effects I was getting better if I worked dark to light. And that works for me because of the technique and the paper that I'm using. If I did that on vellum, bristle vellum, it wouldn't work. I wouldn't be able to get the, the light color to stick. But because I'm using the Fabriano Artistico Hot Press or the Stonehenge, both of those have enough tooth, the individual sheets of Stonehenge, not the one coming in the pack because that's more like vellum and it doesn't stick. Definitely a different surface there. But because of the paper that I'm using having a little bit more tooth, I'm able to layer and get my lights to stick to the paper, to stick to the previous layers, and I'm not burnishing early on. I'm not pushing hard with that pencil. If I burnished and then tried to get light to stick on top of dark, it's not gonna show up. It's really not gonna do a whole lot. So going back to the technique I'm using. See, and with the information that I'm giving you, my own way, one person's way, how overwhelming does this feel? Try to throw in 15 different artists' ways of doing things and you are going to feel totally lost. So that moves on to materials. This is going to depend on the artist. We all have our favorite tools and the way that we find out what we like best is by trying them, experimenting with them. And I don't recommend trying them all at once. I don't think I would run out and buy five different types of paper. I would buy one type of paper do a couple projects on that, then try the next type of paper and see what you like better between those two. Then try a third paper. But work on one at a time. Don't try to mix in too many different things, too many brands of pencils, too many methods of blending until you've tried each individual one, enough that you have a good understanding of what their strengths and weaknesses are. When trying to decide what pencils or what tools you want, you may wanna find an artist whose work looks how you want yours to look. What are they using? What paper, what pencils? Start there. For me, when I was about to give up on colored pencil because I was just so sick of my prismas breaking and all the quality control issues there, I ended up contacting artist Alan Woolett. He had just finished a flamingo that is still one of the best colored pencil flamingos I've ever seen. I figured here's a good starting point. I can see that he's able to achieve the look that I want with these tools. So I got the paper he was using and I got the pencils that he was using. I just started with those and I still blended with, with my odorless mineral spirit. So that is different than how he blends. But I started with those tools. I used those quite a bit before I introduced luminance. When I tried luminance, I did just a project with luminance to get an idea of what their strengths and weaknesses were before I started mixing heavily. Actually, that's not totally true. I did mix them on one project. But then I went after that, I was like, I don't know which one I'm choosing and why, which pencil, why I would choose one over the other. So let's try just luminance by itself. Doing that, let me know the things that I liked and disliked about the pencil. Where, where would it be better for me to switch over to my polychromos or the luminance? Had I not used them individually, I wouldn't understand so well when I should combine them. And the same thing happened recently when I used the Lyra Rembrandt. I had to do a project with them completely by themselves to have a full understanding of where their weaknesses and strengths were for the techniques that I used. So one thing that may really, really help you is just back up, use just the polychromos for a while, then use just the Prismacolor for a while. You're going to have a really good understanding of what you like and dislike about each brand so that when you combine them, you know which to grab for. For your question about how which colors to use for shadows and how to build that up, this comes back again. Pick one artist, try their way of doing it, just their way on a project. Then try another artist's way. Then maybe combine the two ways. See which you like best. There's no way you're going to know. There's no right or wrong answer here. You've got to experience the medium. You've got to experience trying it one way and maybe failing. Maybe not. you don't like that way. But if you don't 
try it and fail, you won't know that you liked this other way better. When you're starting, I definitely would suggest limit how much advice you take in at once. That's not to say that all the advice isn't good. Much of it probably is, but it gets overwhelming. Take in a little here, a little there as you work and then learn something else. Get to where you're comfortable with one technique and then watch some more videos, some more tutorials. Try more of these, but slowly. I think it's great to get information from several sources, just not all at the same time. I've got a frequently asked questions page over on my website. If you cannot find the answer to your question, I have a link where you can submit your own question to be featured in one of these videos. I will have a card pop up here. You can check that out. Thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, art Q&A videos every Thursday, and artist vlogs each weekend. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, Plus. all of those social media sites are linked below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. I'll see you guys on Saturday.